Good evening and welcome. Jason Hoffman here. Glad to be in with you sharing another week of solutions and successes from the Mevo customer group. I hope that as you get to come back and watch this later, as you join us tonight in our live stream, that you're able to find some solutions that you've been looking for, that you're able to share in the successes of folks who have seen success in their own streams. And I look forward to getting to chat with you tonight. So when you pop in, go ahead and leave me a, uh, a hey, a hi, a hello, a howdy y'all, a comment that lets us know you're here. And then we'll get into the We'll get into the solutions and successes from this Mevo customer group over the past couple of weeks. So uh, as, you, as you come in, go ahead and, and choose to say hello there in the chat, and I'll do my best to monitor that as closely as I can. Now, I am going to talk you through my setup this evening before we get too far into this stream. So I'm going to say, let's see, I'm going to say... Camera one, talking to that at this point. Now, technically that's camera three in my setup, but it's the first camera that I'm looking at tonight. Uh, the, the camera that's facing me front and center here is gonna be uh, Amiibo Start. It is one of my backup sound sources. It's not the main one. And then I'll pan over to camera two, which is over here to my right. And it'll show a little bit different view of the room I am in. Uh, if I were to, uh, to spin it just a little bit more, you could see the camera we just came from, but it is going to show you the third camera we'll talk about, which is an overhead shot of anything that we might need to look at together this evening, and it's my secondary sound source. I have a Deity uh, shot, mini shotgun mic attached to that one with one of my 3D prints. It's sitting on top. I don't necessarily have a way of showing it unless... Well, no, then the light would be terrible on that, I suppose. But let me go ahead and show you the overhead shot right now. I just have the case for my Hollyland Lark 150 wireless microphone setup, which I am, by the way, using tonight. Uh, open the case. It's empty. A uh, little, little light shine in there, and you can see that's where it usually is. It's a charging case. It's a great little system. It has a USB-C port on the back, and you just drop your pieces in the... The, uh, the receiver goes here, the two transmitters, the two microphones go here, and it charges them uh, as you carry it where, wherever you might go. You just have to charge the case ever so often there at the back. Great uh, little piece of kit that I have, I have really enjoyed adding to my setup. And so uh, that's the third camera we have. We'll come back to the first one. You can see I am lapeled up here. I have uh, this on my chest, and that's where the sound is coming from into the, the overhead shot camera, but it's into the stream because that's the camera I have turned on. If that one were to go down for some reason, I have the Deity Mini Shotgun mic on camera two there that we can go to, and then if, if for some reason it were to go down, I just have the, the, uh, the general uh, built-in microphone for the Mevo Start there in the, the center-facing camera. So we could go there if we needed to. All right, so the point of this live stream, each, uh, uh, each time we get together, and now it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a, a probably every other week, that seems to be a pretty good schedule for me. Uh, if, if, there is, uh, if there is a swell of interest in this and, and folks would like to see this happen more than, twice, than once every two weeks, if they'd like to see it every week, I can probably do a Tuesday night schedule and, and fit pretty well. Uh, so long as the, the wife doesn't mind me taking the internet that we have, um, because I, I do go through just before 8 o'clock and I ask the daughter and the wife to, to please turn uh, their cellular data on and their Wi-Fi off so that we can, get, uh, we can get a good strong signal going out from this rural internet connection that I have. Uh, I am streaming at 1080 tonight. It looks like things are going fairly well. The only error I've gotten from YouTube Studio is that I am sending data faster than real time, which, of course, is a, a, a nothing error that shows up sometimes, but it doesn't mean anything, and it never does degrade the, the stream in any way. So uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about my, my setup as after we've looked at a few of these uh, successes and solutions, but I want to get into those pretty quick. Um, if you're popping in as we, as I'm sharing some of these, go ahead and say hi in the chat. And that way I'll have the ability to, uh, to acknowledge you on this stream and, and maybe you'll even have a chance 
to share your solutions and successes with the rest of us as well. Okay, so uh, once again, looking through the Mevo customer group on Facebook, and I, I will say, uh, as I do each week, I don't call the names of the original post or post or because that's a private group. And so I can just give the information now if, if by chance the ones that I have picked this week as solutions and successes, if those folks show up in the chat and they don't mind me calling their names, I'll be glad to do so and give them credit where credit is due. But uh, I just hesitate to do that since it is a private group on Facebook and this is a, a public stream on YouTube. So uh, the, first, uh, the first success that I have, and, and it looks like it's split about even, successes and solutions for the ones that I picked. Uh, as you add yours, we'll take those as well, but the ones that I picked look like they're about split. So uh, the first success that I have says this, guessing there's still no news for M1 owners. Question, is there a way to, for FaceTime to see the Mevo? Even via NDI, can't see FaceTime seeing the NDI input annoyingly. Okay, so he's venting frustration about uh, these M1 owners who are not able to use uh, their Mevo in order to stream or in order to, to conduct a FaceTime call. So there is an edit. As, as soon as I saw this, he had the, the original poster had already put an edit on this one. It says, I upgraded to Mac OS Monterey. Monterey just came out. Uh, it says, I upgraded to Mac OS Monterey and tried, and tried wired webcam from the app on my phone, and it seems to be working on the Mac. The menu bar shows wired and FaceTime is picking up the Mevo. And then he asks the question, is this meant to be working now or just a fluke? Well, either way, it's a success because the M1 owners have been looking for that and apparently have found that they can use their Mevo in FaceTime. I've tried it several times myself on an older operating system, never had any luck with it. And so I'm encouraged to know that it works on Monterey. Uh, I'll have a computer running Monterey next week. And so I'll be able to try that for myself and maybe report back to you guys and, and see that success furthered uh, with more experience. All right. So we're glad to see that the that M1 owners are getting some love. Okay. If you pop in tonight, go ahead and leave us a comment in the chat so that we can know that you're here and that we can, uh, we can acknowledge you. But also if you can share your successes and your solutions that you've had streaming with your Mevo, then go ahead and do that as well. All right. The next comment that we have, the next uh, success or solution that we have from the Mevo customer group, customer group says, took the new Mevo 3 start cam, took the new Mevo start three camera streaming setup out for a spin this weekend. Still a work in progress, but we got good reviews from the folks watching at home. And now I'm looking at pictures of this setup and this looks like it's going to be streaming a baseball or softball game. I see some fence clips and some Mevos pointed into the field. I see microphones pointed, in, the mini shotgun mic pointed in that direction as well. I see some shade over them, so that's a that's a healthy thing there. I see a, a, the, all three cameras. One is lab, labeled C, one is labeled L and R. I suppose that's center, left, and right. And then I see another picture uh, of the lawn chair and uh, a computer set up. Um, there's a laptop set up. So let's see what is what the details are on his three camera setup is. It says, for those interested in the technical details, I'm using these cameras in NDI mode. All right. Live producing on site with OBS. All right. NDI running through OBS. He says, thus the laptop. Using a Netgear Nighthawk hotspot router. I am hearing great things about the Netgear Nighthawk hotspot router combination. Uh, great things enough that that may be one of my next investments in my live stream, in my my on-site, in real life kind of live stream. It says then side cameras were a little bit glitchy at times and OBS crashed a few times on me, but overall a good trial run. So first time out, this user with his three camera system, all Mevo starts, saw some good positive feedback from the folks he was able to stream to at home. And I'm sure that the people who were watching whatever game that was, whatever age group that was, uh, were absolutely fired up to get to see their kids, grandkids, who uh, you know, their high school team, whatever it was. I'm sure they were fired up to get to see those kids get to play and to be able to watch from a distance away. As, as so often these travel teams or these teams that are traveling uh, will play in places that folks who are working or folks that are 
that are, are needing to tend to other things don't get to be uh, on site. So getting to watch remotely is uh, an absolute wonderful thing. So great. Thanks for setting it up. Thanks for sharing it with the rest of us. That is absolutely a success. All right. So I'm going to keep going with our solutions and successes from the Mevo customer group. The next one that I have says, thank you for the recent NDI stability fixes. I'm not sure who gets credit for those NDI stability fixes, whether it's going to be the folks working through the app with Mevo or whether it's going to be the folks at NDI, but whichever it is, doesn't make any difference. Uh, this particular poster was absolutely fired up that it was more stable. They say updated last week and it made a huge difference. No artifacts or freezing on our NDI HX video inputs to vMix. Okay, so here's a user that is streaming uh, through vMix using NDI and they saw some great improvements as this last round of, of updates rolled out. Well, that's encouraging to know. So any of you out there who are looking toward using vMix or you've been researching it or, or maybe you've just wondered, is vMix the answer for me? Maybe maybe OBS or Streamlabs OBS or Melon or whatever is, is giving you trouble. vMix may be a solution for you that works because it was for this particular post store on October the 24th in the evening time. If you're looking for that, go back and look and see if there's any comments that will, that will help you understand better what's happening there. All right, one more before we, we look a little bit more at the setup, okay? So, as texts are rolling in that don't relate to this, give me just a sec. All right, non-Mevo question about Rode Wireless Go systems, as I know there are a lot of happy users here. The question is, does the 3.5 millimeter jack input send phantom power? Okay, so he's asking about the actual jack on the back of the Mevo start, does it send phantom power? I would assume yes, because most lobs require it, but is it enough to power any phantom mic? Thinking instrument condenser mics, for example, surprising little, little documentation on, thi on this on Rode website slash tech specs. Okay, so answers will have to be read on this one for us to catch on what's going on here. Uh, first response was no it doesn't. If you need phantom power you'll need an injector which actually will run the 48 volt that is required for actual real phantom power. Okay, the next answer says no it has a built-in battery in both sending and receiving units and that is a correct answer as well. Uh, the Rode Wireless Go, both the systems, original and the, the new uh, version 2, both have built-in batteries in the transmitter and the receiver and they receive their own power. Um, the next answer is nope, it does provide plug-in power. Okay, this one is absolutely talking about the jack on the back of the start. It produces plug-in power of around plus three volts needed to drive a lavalier mic. Okay, so we know that we can plug a, we can plug a mini shotgun mic or a wired lavalier mic into the back of the Mevo start in the three and a half millimeter port, and we know that it will produce enough power through that jack to power that little microphone. That is not enough for actual phantom power light coming out of a, of a sound system board. Uh, and he, he finishes, he continues his answer by saying phantom power, usually plus 48 volts, uh, can usually be found in plug on type of transmitters rather than in belt packs. Uh, and that was a, a good helpful answer apparently because it got several thumbs up. All right, and then the last answer given in this particular question about phantom power as it relates to Rode Wireless Go systems and the uh, Mevo Start, says the Rode Wireless Go sends a line level signal from the receiver unit, which unit which attaches directly to the Mevo Start aux jack. These work great together. So yes, uh, all good info from those those folks who answered. Um, the Rode Wireless Go does work well. It does work that way, but it doesn't have enough power, nor does the Mevo Start produce enough power through its three and a half millimeter, millimeter jack to actually give um, the 48 volts that would be needed for, for running a, a, a big boy microphone. Okay, so on today's live stream for the Mevo Ask Me Anything, Joseph Pisani was, was doing the, uh, the answering today and the question came in from yours truly. Uh, does the USB-C port produce an amount of voltage and how much is that voltage? And the answer did eventually come back around by one of the other guys on the stream there 
in the chat that said, um, yes, it does. It produces um, five volts, one and a half amps, I think was the answer that was given on that. Uh, I don't know if they leave their live chat up for as you go back and watch those streams or if they just rely on the comments after the stream is over. But, but that was the answer, if I remember correctly, five volts out of the USB-C port and one and a half amps out of the USB-C port. So that would be the, the case there. Uh, and this question about phantom power was answered well. Uh, might not have been the answer he was hoping to get, but it did come up with an answer. All right, so uh, something else about my setup. Now, uh, in this small space, I do my best to light it in a way that's non obtrusive, that is a little bit um, accented, but that shines decent light here. Uh, and, and so I have a, a, a main light that is just above the camera view here. So if I were to turn and face this camera, you would see that that light that's above it is, is full on. Uh, it's, it's a front light to me at, at that point. But as I am facing this camera, then it's a, a kind of a side light that, that gives that little bit of a shadow that everybody says is so uh, attractive. Uh, well, it's not attractive on me. It's just something desired, I guess I should say. So I was going to try to show you what that light actually is. And and I, I don't know that I can show you that one because it's on because it is on, and I don't want to to change my camera settings here, my camera setup. So I'll show you the other one that I built this week. Now I've just had one for a long time, but I have built a second. This is a light that I have built. We'll get back to the solutions and successes in just a second. We're kind of in the middle of those, and and I thought I would talk just a little bit more about our uh, our setup. And this is one of the lights that I'm using. Now it's it's not plugged in tonight. Um, it, it, it's ready to be plugged in. Uh, you can see the jack there coming out. This is actually just a baking pan. Uh, and I found these instructions on YouTube, a baking pan light with LED strips. And then I, I covered it with a diffuser that is just simply cloth, white cloth. It's cotton. And then I put a elastic band around uh, the, the lip of that, um, of that baking pan. I'll go ahead and take the cloth off just for you because I I love you guys so much it's hard to get back on there but I'll deal with it later and then you can see what my baking pan looks like as I have wound those LED lights they are all I want to think they're 5600 K on their uh, on their brightness on their color uh, temperature um, but you can see I've wound them around one two three four five times there and then the back side of the pan or the bottom of the pan just reflects all that does a great job of reflecting all of that and it comes out to be a pretty bright light now the one that i'm using tonight the one that is shining on me now is only wound around wound around three times and it shines as bright as you see it here that's all the way up but that's a good bright light that one is five and it'll be a little bit brighter and i may have to diffuse it more than i have diffused this one but that's a good light, and it didn't cost me uh, anything but the cost of two baking pans and one set of, uh, of LED light strips to wind around in there, then, and a drill bit or two, right? I already had the drill bit, so I just drilled a hole to put the, the power through. Okay, so let's see. I have some more solutions and successes as you pop in here tonight, or if you, if you watch this later and, and you're not coming during the time this stream is live, uh, leave a comment. I, I go back and I check all my comments several times a week and I'm able to, to give input. I'm able to answer questions and, and sometimes have a good running conversation with some of the folks who are willing to comment. And I appreciate those comments very much. It, it, uh, it, it's an it's a encouragement for, to me to get to see how folks stream and, and, and I enjoy the, the conversation about it. So uh, even, if this, even if you're watching this when it's not live, go back and, and leave a comment about your solution or your success, or if you have a question, I'll be glad to try to answer questions. I'm not necessarily the expert, but I do absolutely uh, enjoy this, this idea of streaming and, and what we get to do, so. My next, you know what I never did, check this here. That's, that does not sound bad. Okay, so audio, I hope I didn't have audio messed up before this. I'm bad about doing that. Okay, so uh, next solution or success that comes 
from the Mevo customer group. I'll go ahead and, and get to that one. It says, so I've got a question. I'm running an aux cable into the back of my Mevo Start from my mixer with a separate mix. I'm running into an issue where the volume is either too low or too high. Where should I be setting my volume level on the Mevo itself so that I can adjust my, Mevo, my mixer mix recording? Audio is the biggest place I fail on my videos. Well, let me tell you, I'm not calling you by name, but I'm telling you, brother, me too. Audio is the unicorn, and I struggle to get it just exactly right. And Sometimes I try to get fancy and do other things, and it blows up in my face. And, and I have recorded and posted whole videos where I just had to suck it up and, and apologize for the audio that was on it because I just didn't have the ability to go back and re-record some of it or do a voiceover. So I hear you on struggling with audio. Sometimes that is hard. And as I looked through, this, through the, the questions and answers that were given on the Mevo customer group this week, I saw more audio questions than I've ever seen uh, in, in what we do. Um, the audio seems to be one of those things that people get right up to, right up to the edge of it. They just about get it figured out, and then it seems like something changes, and it can be so incredibly frustrating for folks who are trying to run a live stream. Now, when you're in a studio, when you're in a spot that's controlled, you can pretty well set it up and, and you can know that, that what you're doing is going to work within reason, uh, so long as you're not trying to get, you're trying to add uh, additional stuff and, and, and messing it up that way. Uh, but yeah, audio is, is one of those things that's just a struggle sometimes. And so I appreciate this question that says, hey, uh, aux cable, mixer, Sometimes it's too low, sometimes it's too high. I just can't seem to find that sweet spot. And so here's the first question. Here's the first response that comes to that question. It says, I set the Mevo at zero decibels. And uh, there's some explanation about what zero decibels actually means. Uh, in, the, in the adjustments in the 2.0 app, that's going to be where the little line is in the center. That's going to be as close as we can understand to zero decibels. In the multicam app, it's going to be about halfway up the slider, the gain slider, uh, on whichever channel, you're, whichever camera you're using. And so you'll, you'll actually see the decibels number go from negative whatever to zero to positive whatever uh, as you slide up or down in the multicam app. So you can see what zero decibel is, and that's about midway. I guess it's probably precisely midway. But the answer comes in the form of, I set the Mevo at zero decibels and make adjustments on my board. All right, so if he's running out of his out of his board into his Mevo and he's putting his Mevo slider at zero, then he's making the adjustment to get it to sound correct on his board. He's running that channel or the, that mix of channels, that slider, up or down, so it sounds good with the Mevo app's volume control, volume slider set at zero. Now that's a good first uh, response. He says, then once I get the board where I want, I test stream the Mevo and see if the output levels are where they need to be. If not, I turn up or down based on that in the Mevo app, apparently. So once you get, and then the, the response to that answer from the original poster says, so once you get the board set, then you control it with the Mevo app. And the original answer, who's, who's given the help here, comes back and says, if you're going to run it that way, I have multiple setups and I've used the Mevo app to control it. The other setup is where the board is dynamic. So if you have someone at the board who can actually make the change during your stream, if that's reachable for you, then we leave the Mevo at zero decibels and we just make the change on the board because it's within reach. You're not having to go into settings to get there if you're in the 2.0 app. Of course, if you're in the multicam app, you can just reach over and slide it up or down because whoever's manning that stream has access to it right there. And then, and then the answer was, okay, I'll do that. Uh, so that looks like a good solution given to this question of how do I get the audio just right from, my, from the combination of my soundboard out in my Mevo in, uh, whether it's at the soundboard or whether it's at the Mevo in the app. And he gives two good answers there or two good possible scenarios that either one will work. All right, so we'll move on to the next solution or success from the Mevo customer group. 
And it says, was planning on using the, Mevo, the, the three Mevo camera set up for a podcast. What's the best way to incorporate my mic audio? See, another audio question. Uh, but this one's unique. It's about podcasts, which is fascinating to me. I am not one who listens to podcasts. I've tried to get into it. Matter of fact, I was scrolling through Amazon Music the other day because I noticed that they have a whole podcast section now. And I use Amazon Music all the time. And I was looking for podcast that would be interesting to me. I haven't settled on any yet. My wife is a crime podcast junkie. She watch, she listens to that stuff every day on the way to work. She has a much longer commute than I do. She commutes about 40, 45 minutes one way uh, to get to her job. Um, I walk down the hill to get to mine. Um, we live right next to the church that I pastor, so it doesn't take me uh, 45 seconds to get to the Maybe a minute and a half. It's not that short of a walk, but it doesn't take me long. But I do get to drive sometimes, and so there's usually a 15, 20, or maybe an hour drive that I have, and I wouldn't mind having a podcast to listen to from time to time. I haven't gotten there yet, haven't found the ones to listen to, but I'm interested in this question. Was planning on using the three Mevo camera setup for a podcast? What's the best way to incorporate my mic autos? Okay, so mic audios. So apparently this particular poster is looking at a podcast that's also streamed. It, the, the video portion of the podcast, not just the audio portion. So that's that could be a really cool podcast to get to listen to or watch if because you could do either one, right? So, uh, and, and actually, um, one of the admins from the Mevo customer group pops in to answer this question. It says, plug your audio out from your mixer or your soundboard into the three and a half millimeter TRS input. The that's the, if you're going to use an interface, if you're going to use a, a mixer or a soundboard, that probably is the simplest way. Direct line, nothing between it but a, but a cable the, out from the soundboard into the three and a half millimeter jack on the Mevo Start, and you're rocking and rolling, or one of the Mevo Starts. Make sure that's the one that's turned on in the Multicam app, and you are rocking and rolling with audio. Great thing about, um, great thing about the output, excuse me, the inputs on the back of the start, each of them having enough voltage to power a small microphone or a USB microphone, you can absolutely run something like what I have here for my voiceovers. I use, now I'll drop that pop filter a little bit so you can kind of see what I've got going on here. Um, this is my voiceover mic. Sometimes I use this when I'm shooting a video and it's, uh, it's, it's in here. If I'm doing a lot of talking head on that video, I'll pull this mic out and I'll use it as my main microphone for uh, a said video. Uh, and the great thing about it is whether I want to plug it into my Mac that is right here, which is great, I can just USB plug it in, or if I want to take that USB-A and adapt to a USB-C and plug it into my Mevo Start and tell the Mevo Start in the settings to power uh, external devices. There's that toggle you can turn on, power external devices. It's enough to power this little microphone, or I can plug it into my mat, to my, uh, my mm -hmm, iPad and, and get the same result as well. So uh, this little microphone can be plugged into any of my sources, and I can go ahead and get uh, a, a good quality audio. Now, I, I, I can't uh, run it through my iPad in the Multicam app, of course. I have to do a a, a separate voice recording and, and, and patch it in if I'm doing a, rec a recording. But I, I can in the 2.0 app because I can use the, the iPad microphone as an input in the 2.0 app. So uh, I, to this poster, good luck on your podcast. I hope you're able to get it up and running and I wouldn't mind getting to look at it at some point. I wish you were in the chat tonight and, and could, uh, could point us in the right direction of where you're going to be posting that podcast, who's going to be hosting it for you. So a good, solid answer. Thank you. I'm grateful that the, the Mevo admins, uh, who are employees of, uh, of Mevo, uh, are generally employees of, of Mevo, are willing to come into the customer, customer group because that's not, a, that's not a Mevo, necessarily a Mevo-affiliated group. It's just a customer group, or just a support group that we kind of help each other out with. So good stuff on that. All right, another success or solution from the Mevo customer group. I would like to be able to click live on multicam and be able to live stream to my web page. 
Can it be done easily? Oh, this question fires me up. I'd like to be able to click live on Multicam and it be able to live stream to my web page. So to have that stream embedded in a web page that someone apparently hosts. That's a really good question. Uh, there's a really good answer that comes, but I tell you, this question is incredibly interesting to me because uh, I, I have thought and, and considered, hey, you know what? I, I need to be doing something with, with my webpage. I, I had it up for a blog for a while and I just haven't been faithful with it and kept it up. Uh, and my son being in mass marketing says, I really need my webpage to be dynamic. And so being able to embed some of my stuff there might be a really cool thing to do. So uh, I'm going to take this answer question was, I'd like to be able to click live on Multicam and be able to live stream to my webpage. Can it be done easily? And the answer is, if you're running a WordPress website, I am. Take a look at WP Stream for a really easy integrated solution. Not connected with the company, just a happy customer. All right, well, thank you for giving that answer to this question. That was back on October the 23rd, but that's an incredibly helpful, uh, uh, helpful direction to, to be pointed in. Um, and then there was another answer given on the same question. Actually, there's two more answers given uh, on the same question. Uh, and one of the guys, apparently a pastor, is pointing people to Sermon.net as a, a church streaming solution, and, and that would, would allow you know, the, the embedding depending on what service you use there. So uh, yeah, to, to be able to embed in a, in a web page that you may run of your own uh, would be a great thing for our live streams. Uh, let me say one more time that as, as you are popping in here, go ahead and leave us a, a hello in the comments so we can acknowledge that you're here. And then go ahead and post your success or your solution that you've run across in the in, uh, from streaming with Mevo, whether it's in the Mevo customer group or not. We would love to hear what su successes and solutions that you've run across. You may even have a question. Now, I'm not necessarily in, in the, the habit of taking questions and answering them because I'm, I'm no expert. But, but I would love to be able to see your experiences show up in our chat. And, and be an encouragement to the folks who, to all the folks who would be, uh, who would be involved in watching this at some point. Okay, so before I get to uh, another one, I, I, I have had this this uh, this idea run around in my head about Mevo itself because of the success of the company. Now we saw it be somewhat of a startup, and then we saw live stream by it, and then we saw the startup, uh, the original startup. Um, entrepreneur, buy it back from Livestream, and now it is sold to Logitech. And, and I've, I've actually had conversations with some of the folks at Logitech um, and, and have, have really appreciated their willingness to reach out to folks and, and, and the, th the direction. It's got this question that, that bounces around, and I think I made a comment about it on one of my recent videos. I think I referred to uh, Mevo as an ecosystem. Okay, so everybody says that uh, when people get invested in the Apple ecosystem, it's hard to get out of it because everything that you have is iCloud or everything you have is, is integrated with each other and all the devices that you might have. And so if you have an, uh, an iPhone, then the tablet you get is probably going to be an iPad because, well, it, they, the continuity between the two of them is actually incredible. And if you have a, an iPad and you need a desktop or a laptop, you're probably going to aim yourself at an iMac or a MacBook. Um, so they've developed an ecosystem, but to me, the lock on the ecosystem for Apple is that they build hardware and software in the same house, which is what Mevo does. And so I just wonder, and, and maybe you can put this in the, in the chat, in the comments as well. Do you consider Mevo to be an ecosystem? Now, I know they only do really the two pieces. They've got the camera and they've got the software that the camera runs on. But as we see that develop, and as we see it become a part of a much bigger company, Logitech, do you think that this Mevo ecosystem will be something that grows and flourishes and, and kind of takes off, kind of takes a life of its own? And I know that Logitech has, has many other uh, sub-companies, you know, you know, other pieces of the puzzle. There's, there's a lot that goes into who Logitech is at this point. They're not just keyboards and mice anymore. Um, but... If Mevo is a part of that, I wonder if that's going to be somewhat of an ecosystem. I love that the hardware and the software folks are uh, pretty much in the same building. I know there are a lot of them are working from home right now because of the pandemic, but, but to see that there is such great communication between the two sides, 
Uh, I don't know what they're working on for hardware next. Uh, they tell us uh, about features for the software that it's coming soon. Uh, and and we, we love that it's coming soon. That's, it's not a knock when, when users joke about it coming soon. It's, we recognize that's just the way it is. Uh, until it works, you're not going to release it. And we appreciate that greatly. We don't want you to release it until it works. Um, so coming soon is, is okay. That, that's, that's not a knock. Um, we know that for software, it's all coming soon. Uh, but the idea that, that the same company is building both of those, to me, is... It's kind of a cool deal, and, and, it, and it gives me confidence in the system. It gives me confidence in the product, and, and, and I don't mind investing in the product for the solution that it gives me, knowing that hardware and software are going to work together. See, that's the thing they say about Apple. It just works. And so we, as we see this, this fledgling technology uh, develop more and more, and as it becomes part of a bigger company, if it continues to just work, uh, you may have uh, you may have something that absolutely skyrockets on your hands. So, anyway, it, if you've got a, a thought on that, leave it in the comments, leave it in the chat section, and uh, and I'd appreciate it very much. All right, so let's get back to our solutions and successes from the Mevo Customer Group. Um, if you are here with us, go ahead and say hi to us in the chat or in the comments so that we'll know you're here and I can acknowledge you. Now the next question says, "How do I send my camera application?" to a Facebook page. Okay, so when we want to stream to Facebook, there have to be some permissions granted in order for that to happen. And this is actually a, a thing that, that stumps a lot of folks. Uh, I, I, okay, not to derail myself, and I'm sorry my ADHD is kicking in. However, I will say this. Uh, again, this week, I saw the question asked that gets asked every week, and people are so gracious about answering it. Nobody's ever made to feel bad even though it's the first question everybody ever runs across, and that is, I zoomed in to my subject, and it kept zooming back out. How do I make it stay zoomed in? And, of course, everybody uh, was willing to say, turn off autopilot. Uh, that, 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 is, um, that is that question that gets asked because new users are always bumping up against that, and that's okay. Um, new users need to learn, and, and the Mevo Customer Group is a place where new users can um, can thrive. They're, they're not made to feel like they're stupid. Excuse me, that's that, that's a, a dirty word in some people's houses, I guess, but but so often you get into a customer group or you get into a, 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 a forum type setting and, and experienced users will just talk down to, to new users. And it just drives me crazy when they do that. So um, I was thankful again this week to have seen that. That's not this question. I'll get back on track. Here we go. Uh, how do I send my camera application to Facebook page. So the permissions that need to be granted so that when we try to go live to Facebook, we actually have the ability to do so. And here is the, uh, the, the two questions, that, uh, the two answers that come to this question. The first one says, sign into Facebook on the Mevo app. Then all the pages that you're an admin of should appear as options for streaming. If it's a group, then you have to authorize the app in the group settings first. All right, then the second answer, We'll give a little bit more information. Agree with original answer. Also add, if it is a group page on Facebook, then you have to add which Mevo app you're using, Multicam or 2.0, under group settings. I put both just in case, and you have to do this on a computer with Facebook. So you have to go into the group, and in that group, there's a place to find your settings and put, um, put give permission to any app. You just search for the app in that section and, and give it permission. And if you're signed in, it receives that permission, then you, you can rock and roll. You can go back into the Mevo app. And if you're an admin for a, uh, a page or a group, that, or you own it, you're, you're, you know, whatever page, then you can go live from the Mevo app and you don't have to jump through any other hoops. It just works. Mm. Mevo, building something that just works. That is awesome. Okay, so do you have any, uh, anything to add? to our Mevo customer group successes and solutions. Live streaming tonight. Uh, would love to, to be able to acknowledge anyone that has been in here. Uh, if you will s just say, hey, that would be an incredible encouragement to me. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to peruse the customer group one quick time. Uh, if there are no other things that get added into our chat tonight. All right. And I don't see anything. Oh, here's a, here is a 
question asking for recommendation for a travel router. Great thing to ask for because so many folks do uh, get outside of a controlled setting and need to be able to have reliable internet. Now, of course, you're on a travel router, you are going to be relying on the cellular service in that area, and that's okay. I mean, it you know, it's usable because folks will use it. Uh, any recommendation for a travel router is the question here. Um, the first answer, and there's a few. I'll, I'll give you some some of the things that it said. I use the MyWi 5G hotspot, which works well for streaming, and it's great to keep the stream connected without having to keep the Mevo app open and running to keep the stream live. It acts as a uh, a Wi-Fi source, and so as we know in the 2.0 app, you don't have to keep the the app open if you're connected to Wi-Fi. You can uh, you can close it and do other things, and you will keep streaming if you just have the uh, the Mevo running through the 2.0 app. Okay, the second one actually gives a link. So this is from yesterday. If you'd like to go back and search it, it the the question was any recommendations for a travel router. Once again, I don't put the names of the folks there because that's a private group and this is a public stream. Um, but in that question, there were several answers, and the second answer actually gives a link to the router that this particular person uses. Um, and then the next person to that uh, ditto's the link and says, "I like mine too." Hooked it up, hooked it up to my Verizon M2100 to give Ethernet works like a charm. So using a hotspot, connecting it to this travel router, which is uh, which ha has has power to it. I'm going to click on that link and see what that actually is because it's not one that I'm familiar with, but man, that's that's encouraging. Um, three port router has a USB A uh, connection to it as well. Two antenna um, runs both 2.4 gigahertz and uh, and five gigahertz signal. Um, this one actually includes a VPN. Not that that's uh, that's not something I would I would use if I were out streaming, but uh, that's a that's a good answer. So recommendation for a travel router. Go back and look in the Mevo customer group and find this, and 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 I, and I think maybe you'll find something if you're looking for that. The next answer is one that I expected: the Netgear Nighthawk M1 or M2. All right, so that's a that's a, a common one that I see posted quite often. Uh, and, and, and I have some interest in. I'm just using a, a Verizon MiFi. I have the 8800. I have the 7700 as well. Uh, and I've tried to use them back and forth and see which one's better. The tests that I run say that 8800 is better. Uh, it's not always in real world though, so um, in, in real life. So I, I'm still searching for the answer. But, uh, but uh, this week when I stream our football game on Friday night, I will, I'll, have a, I'll actually have a, a plugged in uh, Wi-Fi router uh, receiving internet from my Verizon MiFi 8800, and uh, and we're going to try that with a three camera setup, one placed on the 50, and and then two on each, and one on each 35 yard line to uh, to give three shots of a football game, uh, and and I think it's going to work so long as so long as our one cell tower that's in the area can handle the traffic uh, of me and everybody else that's at the football game, then we'll we'll do fine. All right. So two other recommendations. One was a Ubiquity Dream Machine, and the next one was a Cisco Meraki, uh, Meraki, and I don't, I'm not familiar with either of those, but those were the answers that were given. And so, uh, if you're looking or in the market for or, or researching recommendations for a travel router, then I'd, I'd say, yeah, there's just some good, uh, good suggestions there. Okay, so I, I, I do see some some issues with broken or corrupt files that question coming up over and over again on the Mevo customer group. Um, it's not one that I was prepared to bring to the stream tonight because I don't see that there's been a, a solid solution yet, but, but I will give my opinion of that. Sometimes our SD cards that we try to use in the Mevo camera just um, aren't what they should be. Uh, sometimes we've gone the cheapest route, and so either they're too slow and the read-write speed on them doesn't match what is actually needed, or sometimes they're just low quality and, and they, they don't handle being read and written uh, so many times. So, Mary Wesson, hey, from Oklahoma, thank you for jumping in and saying hi. If you have a solution or a success from, from your live streaming, go ahead and pop it in here in the chat and we'll get to call it out here in just a little bit. Thanks for, for joining in with us. I, I will ask you, Mary, too, while you're, while you're with us tonight, um, do you use 
uh, a hotspot or a router when you're streaming, uh, when you're out outside streaming. Now, you may not outside stream. You may be in, in one of those places that only does it indoors. But if you happen to be one of those people that does outdoors, then uh, do you use a, a hotspot or do you use a router while you're out and about? And that's just a question for you. Since that's the topic we were on whenever you popped in, or at least it was when I saw that pop up. You may have been here a minute or two. Sometimes there's quite a bit of delay on that. Uh, but the, the type or the, the quality of SD card we put in the, in the Mevo actually absolutely does make a difference. And so I have, I do believe I have one here, um, Samsung. Uh, most of mine are either going to be Samsung or I don't see another one. It's, this is not the only brand that I use, um, and I'm, of course I'm not about to pull one out, but uh, Samsung, find a name brand for, uh, for that SD card because that's going be, um, to be important. The quality there is, is absolutely important. Okay. Uh, there, there's always questions about, um, about streaming from your cell device. To, uh, to the camera, just using our cell device as our, as our only internet connection. And, and from my experience and the folks that, uh, that, that I have uh, I've helped get set up, uh, I will say, and, and they will echo, um, if you can have a hotspot, if you can have, of course, if you're streaming indoors and you have access to a router or if you have access to ethernet, you know, the, the, the more solid your connection, the better off you are. But, uh, but to be able to use a... Uh, uh, a data plan hotspot uh, is better. Whenever I do a speed test before a football game on a Friday night or before a baseball game on Tuesdays and Fridays, when I do that speed test, if I do a speed test on my phone, that's the least data uh, upload and download speed that I, that I get of my speed test. If I do one on my, on my iPad or on my hotspot, my MiFi, those are both always higher upload speeds and usually download speeds as well than my iPhone. And I don't know why that is. If the, if, if the network carriers are looking at that and, and they, they don't think a, a cell phone needs that much upload speed, so they, they don't give it to it. Um, I don't know what, what causes that, but just about without fail, whenever we have, uh, when we, when I do a speed test, when I, when I test the MiFi, it's going to give me a better upload speed. When I test my iPad, it's going to give me better than the iPhone, maybe not quite as good as the MiFi, but those devices, uh, I would say, are better for streaming than just a cell phone. Uh, so if you have a, an iPad with a cellular plan on it, or if you have a, a dedicated hotspot, that's the way to go if you're going to be streaming out and about, if you're going to be uh, out there in real life, so to speak, uh, doing your streams. So. Uh, it's been a long time since I've tried to set up a laptop and use Livestream Studio or OBS. Um, those are good solutions. Uh, Livestream Studio is robust. It's just incredibly expensive. OBS is a free option. Uh, you just have to work around the, the, uh, the constant changes in OBS as that app is constantly being updated as, as a, an open source app. Uh, but um, software-wise, uh, I don't do a laptop very often. I do my best to stick with how the Mevo was designed. I love that it has a multicam function. I love that it has a 2.0 app if I'm just using a single camera. Um, and so I don't use other software very often. But there have been a couple that I've tested and will continue to do so. And, of course, post those tests here on the, uh, on the channel uh, if that can be a help to folks out there. So if you're here and you haven't said hey yet, go ahead and say hello. Uh, and if you haven't put in your success or your solution that you've found as you've streamed, go ahead and do that as well. I've had a great time uh, calling out several successes, several questions being answered, which we call solutions. Uh, I like to call them solutions because they are—they absolutely are. Uh, when somebody posts in the Mevo customer group and somebody else answers and shares the knowledge they have, <laughs> solution. That is a, that's a great thing. It's good for the community, and it helps people in general get their message out. Um, there, are, there are many kind of messages that we do, no matter what our real job might be. Um, I, have, I have the privilege of getting to, to put my message out on Sundays, uh, and I believe that's an incredibly important message, but I also have the privilege of getting to put a message out on, on Tuesdays and Fridays for the, the local high school sports that we have, and I, I think that's incredibly important for our community as well. And, and then as special events happen, I, I get a chance to stream a, a parade like one of, our, uh, one of our posters did a couple weeks ago on the, on the live stream. Uh, he had a chance to stream a parade and set up a multicam uh, uh, setup 
for that parade and, and did a great job of, of a, a camera across the street, a camera on this side of the street, up above the parade, looking down on all the participants coming through. They did a beautiful job of, of, of uh, streaming that parade. And, and, and I think that's incredibly valuable to a community because it allows, it allows people who couldn't be out there at the parade to enjoy and be a part of and feel as though they still are a part of that community. So yeah, um, we get a privilege of getting to do things that do in fact uh, bring community together and, and, and make this whole world a, a better place to be. I have one more thing that I'm gonna share with you about my setup. There it is. All right, so uh, one of the guys from the Mevo Customer Group reached out to me uh, yesterday or day before. We've, we've been talking back and forth on Messenger and uh, was looking for a uh, looking for a lens cover for his Mevo Start. And um, there is a file on Thingiverse, that 3D printing place, that someone made back a year, maybe two years. Now, it's not my file. I didn't make that one. I've made several files on Thingiverse, and I've printed them, and I've shipped them all over the world. And I, and I, I don't mind doing that. If, if somebody is willing to pay for shipping, I don't mind, sh I don't mind printing out a a, uh, a cold shoe mount or, or whatever else is that folks have been wanting. I gladly do that and, and send it to them so long as they'll make sure I don't have to pay for their shipping. Uh, and so I printed this lens cover. It's the first one like this I printed. And I have to say, what an incredibly clean design. I'm not sure who the guy was that did it. He has a, a common attributions license on his, uh, on his uh, design. And so I'm giving credit to that person on Thingiverse that designed this. He did, I didn't. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera and see if maybe I can get enough light to shine on it, that you can see the, the design on the inside there. And I may switch over to this camera and hold it up to that light. Oh yeah, look at that. That is, uh, you can see the stops that he built into it. Uh, I assume that one is the top and one is the bottom. I, I imagine it goes on like this. I haven't even test fitted it yet. I just pulled it off the printer. But, uh, but man, it's, a, it's an incredibly clean design. This is, it printed a very smooth print here. It's, it, it's quality, right? it's thick. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about put, taking it on and, and off many, many times. It's, it's gonna last. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm fired up to get to send this out tomorrow, throw it in the mail, and, uh, and take care of the fellow that needed a lens cover for his Mevo Start. Uh, if, if you've got access to a 3D printer, uh, thingiverse.com, just search Mevo, and this will be one of the, one of the uh, the search results and it'll be obvious that, uh, that that's what you're looking at whenever you look at it. So uh, yeah, this community of Mevo users that, that kind of has centered itself around the Mevo customer group, I'm fired up about that. Okay, so those of you that have stuck with me through 53 minutes of a live stream, thank you for coming in, coming out, coming back in, maybe if you did, but, uh, but I have one more announcement to make uh, and I'm really, really excited about this. Next time we have a live stream, I'm going to be able to put in front of you uh, some really big news about the uh, about something coming up between uh, probably between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. There's going to be some things that I get to do as a channel between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's going to impact you. Uh, it's going to it's going to put stuff in your hands. It's going to be uh, a way for me to uh, to just uh, appreciate all the folks that help each other out in this uh, in this Mevo system, uh, this Mevo ecosystem, as we talked about earlier. And so, um, so stick with me. Uh, if you came tonight, look forward to it uh, in two weeks. I'll be back. Um, I'm, I may actually start trying to do this once a week. Do it every week and get a little more consistent and try to find more, uh, more viewers that way. Um, but yeah, I, my intention is to, uh, to be able to announce next time we, we have this live stream uh, what I'm going to be doing that will put uh, product in your hand uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, uh, you can say bye in the chat and I'd appreciate that or you can leave a comment in the comments after it's over but thank you so much for for being with us tonight I've thoroughly enjoyed sharing solutions and successes from the Mevo customer group with y'all have a 